Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube series. If this is your first time watching, I am uh, competing in 15 weeks for the Newark Pro. So I'm documenting this whole process and also my coach Matt Jansen's involved and he's gonna be also sharing his diet changes, nutrition changes, um, and giving explanation to those. So we're gonna give some education along with this piece and hopefully y'all can learn more along the way. So from last week, I had dropped, Matt had dropped 50, uh, my carbohydrates to 50 grams per day, fats were around seven grams, so there was a, a calorie drop. Still doing cardio seven days per week for 30 minutes in the morning. It's just steady state cardio. Currently, I weighed in this morning at 243.4. Uh, last week, I was 243.0, so I did have a slight increase, but visually, I can see a, a real, there's quite a bit of change. I'm a lot leaner. I can really notice it almost every day. I can really see it in my, my quads, my midsection, uh, especially fullness is changing too. So I feel fuller and leaner. Um, quads look fuller, shoulders look a little bit more rounder, which is great, changes are really going well. Uh, of course, for going to 212, there is a matter of weight involved. So weight needs to be coming down. So uh, I'm gonna let Matt get into that. But for this episode, I'm going to be training back, rear delts and biceps day, take you through a workout, uh, give you some of my thoughts on uh, alternating between rep ranges. And then Matt's gonna also give you some information on how do you structure your off days for nutrition and also utilizing refeed days. At the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you a little education piece on maintaining strength during prep and how to modify training volume and intensity accordingly. So I'll go ahead, turn it over to Matt, let him give you the nutrition and training updates for the week. What's up guys? We are quickly approaching 15 weeks out. Um, just to quickly go over the changes for this week, I know I said last week, I don't know if I said it actually on camera or just to John, but I thought we would ride this for a while, but basically I think John's body is still kind of coming into its own. He's getting fuller, harder, rounder, but his weight is also right around the same, if not up a little bit. Um, so I did make a few more changes this week. I pulled 10 grams of carbs from meals two and three, and then he had an English muffin in his last meal, and I took that out as well. So that's basically the only changes. So we're looking at about 55 grams of carbs removed, um, 45, about 40 to 50, 45 to 50 grams of carbs removed um, for the week. And then one of the things that I want to touch on this week outside of just direct changes was I saw a few questions about how we're going to approach off days, how nutrition changes on off days. And honestly, again, in the scope of me viewing John as a performance athlete and, and me wanting to keep his performance as high as possible throughout prep, I view an off day as a necessary day needed to recover. Um, so with that being said, I'm not going to overly pull food from him on those off days because I want the food to be in place to aid in recovery efforts. You know, this, he should honestly, I'd like him to sleep a little bit more and then I want to keep his diet as steady as possible because if he's, if he's needing and, and his training warrants a, a day of rest and that, that day of rest is put in there to, to recover. So that way his performance can be back to the same point. The next day he goes back into the gym. So the only change that he has right now on his off days are to his intra workout carbs um, which is about 80 grams of cyclic dextrin. Um, but other than that, his, his meals stay the exact same. So, it, you know, basically it says that consistent plan is still in place. No drastic changes. No, you know, I'm not pulling all of his carbs out or anything like that. And then honestly, there's probably going to get to a point during his prep where he's to the point of being depleted. That I'll actually use his off day as a refeed day um, to kind of replenish while resting you know, and I know that there's a lot of different thought processes about refeeding. Some people like to put refeeds in on a, on a larger body part. But again, just taking things as what they are, if his body's in that depleted of a state where his body warrants him needing a refeed, then I'm not going to want to put extra work in on that day. I'm actually going to want to allow his body to recover, allow his body to soak up the nutrients. That way it, it extends into the week somewhat, you know, because if you go into a refeed but you also keep the cardio the exact same that day and then you also train legs for two hours chances are your net gain from that refeed in terms of glycogen in terms of weight on the scale it's going to be minimal at best so um, that's just kind of an overall overview of how I like to approach an off day I want to keep it in there um, I want to keep the nutrients in and then you know like I said there's going to be points where I actually increase nutrients to aid in the body's ability to recovery so that's about it for this week 
Um, thank you guys for all the positive comments. Uh, please keep asking us questions. We're happy to answer those and uh, we'll just keep going. This is my second back workout of the week. It's a higher rep, shorter rest period workout, more supersets involved, just ca- trying to cause more metabolic stress. It's one, one of the mechanisms for hypertrophy. While my back day early in the week is more heavy loading, longer rest intervals, really focusing on mechanical tension and e- eccentric loading. I split them up just to have um, that variance and using utilizing undulating periodization and trying to maximize adaptations on each one of those days, a- opposed to having like he- a few work a few exercises that are heavy loading and then going into like metabolic stress work. I- I've done both. I'm just playing around to see which is the best. I really haven't found research to kind of validate this. Uh, you-, you could find stuff on you know structuring. Like if you did hypertrophy work, then followed that with like power, power explosive movements, like they're going to interfere with each other. But as far as hypertrophy training, I haven't really found anything. So I'm playing around with doing different days. Like I don't want to call it a pump day. I, I just don't like the terminology, but um, like a more metabolic day. So I start off with hammer strength, low row, just because I, I do want some more of the upper back thickness. So I, I just go up to a max out set of 15 reps. And then I'll rest pause the second and third set to get back up close to that 10 to 15 rep mark. So I'll rest 20 seconds and then I'll just go all out to failure again. And I'll I'll just note those down and see what I get up to. After after doing like an upper back movement, I I do hit a lot of lower lat on this area. And that's one area that I'm trying to improve on. It has really improved this past off season. And I, I, I pause on all these isometrics, uh, at the bottom. So it's like an isometric hold and I'll start with a, like a neutral narrow grip on the, on the pull down and then go right into a, a, a standing pullover and both movements. Like you have a, a good contraction movement and then a stretching movement and, and loading is tensions different throughout each one. But pausing on that isometric, you can really feel your lap movement. Like there, you'll you'll understand quickly if you're using momentum to swing back and get the weight down because you won't be able to hold the isometric. And and when you truly hit muscular failure on doing these pull downs, you will um won't, won't be able to pause anymore. So that's kind of quickly I know if it's if it's truly the lat failing or if you're starting to bring other muscles into it and bring it. Um, and, and to get get movers involved, but for uh, for the pull overs, I, I do like them standing. I've done dumbbells, but the loading just isn't that great. You have heavy loading in the you know the fully stretch phase, but it once the dump the elb the wrist gets over underneath the uh, shoulder, you kind of lose that tension. So I do prefer cables. I think you get a better tension throughout the full range of motion. So after after doing those, I move on to doing a wide grip pull down, which I it will involve a little bit more of the terrace major, getting into the upper lat more, and doing a seated low row with a with a mag grip handle. And so this can really bring the elbows close to the body, and again another way to to work that that lower lat. So that's a good just full lat movement. You hit some upper and some lower with the other. Again, on these, I'm just working to really pause and make sure I'm getting a good hard contraction with the back. And don't get me wrong, this isn't just all about squeezing weights here. It's I'm progressive, and so it's you know besides undulating progression, I, I do it's it almost is linear because I'm at trying to add weight in reps every single workout. After that, I move on to a single dumbbell single arm dumbbell row. And I just do one all out set. So it's a, just kind of the run the rack drop set. I'll just start with the weight I can hit for about 10 to 12 reps. And then I'll, I'll drop and get another 10, drop, get another 10. So if I hit 10 or 12 on, on any one of those weights, I will note, note for like next time to move up. So I'm still progressive. Um, even on like a metabolic day, there's some stuff that's just not going to progress well just because of the nature of the lift. And that's okay. You know, it's, it's more about 
inducing that stress for the day. So that stress stimulus, uh, opposed to just having to increase weight and reps every time. So I might be able to make that those that weight and reps just more challenging that day for by just execution. I do like this as a finisher. Um, I, I will take like about a two minute rest between arms. Moving into the next arm, every single time, it's like the next arm will have a poor performance if you go straight into it. So if you're doing single arm work, you know, give yourself your rest periods before going into working the other arm. Uh, it is, it's going to even be done continuously, you know, have a minute rest after every single arm. That way it's it's all even breaks and, and you're not going to be, uh, you know, getting fatigued for the next next set. Um, of course, after all the lat work's done, I do I do stretch just to do some heavy loading. You can kick that left leg back further to really uh, shift the hips and get a, a bigger stretch in the lat. I really believe in, in stretching out and spreading the scapulas. Next, I moved on to rear delts. So I, we have a good rear pec deck fly here at the Muscle Factory, and I get a good isolation contraction with that one, and then I can move on to like a compound and pre-fatigue a little bit, and I do like doing rope face pulls. I think it has a good uh, mechanism for, for both actions of the rear delt, doing some external rotation and some uh, shoulder flexion as well. So you, you get a good combo of everything. Hit the rear delt from, from all different angles. And the, the rear delt, it's tricky because it's a hard thing to feel. So a lot of times I'll have someone just like push a finger into the, my rear delts as I'm working them. You can really make sure you're using those the, the muscle that you're intended to use. From there, moving on to biceps. I'll just do a, a seated, supinated uh, dumbbell curl. And I like them seated just because it, it takes, make sure you're keeping some momentum at them. I will work up to a max out set of about 15 to 20 reps on the first set. The second and third set, I will rest pause again, just like I did on that first first exercise. And I'll work up and hit failure. I'll rest 20 seconds. I'll hit failure again and rest another 20 seconds. So I will go like a true rest pause, like three sets within one. And that's that's carried out just on that that second and third set. And I, I do try to really keep my elbows locked in a in one pivot position, and not letting them drift up a lot. And you'll see a lot of that. And what what happens when you're like drifting that elbow upward? Is that elbow is coming up underneath the hand? So you're, you're trying to get more mechanical advantage that way. So just performing a a stricter lift, you're gonna get you're just going to be using the bicep and that's really what we want here when we're training. So after those, I went on to do uh, a reverse curl and I only do two sets here. Two sets is all out. Everything I got, try to hit 15 to 20 reps, just uh, work some of the forearm flexors and brachialis. I, I don't, I don't train arms a lot just because they have, they've always been a strong point. So just with some heavy, heavy loading through my back days and my chest days, all the pressing and pulling, they, they get developed pretty, pretty good. So I'll just add on usually two exercises for at the end of back or another two exercises at the end of triceps. I'm sorry, at the end of chest. And that's it. That's it for my high rep back day. Well, that concluded my back Rudell bicep workout on Training in general, I think, and Matt touched on this a little bit last week, but I think it's important as you approach into prep, the continuing with the same weight training that you're doing in the off season, the same stimulus that you're giving to the muscle to initiate hypertrophy. It's the same thing you want to keep doing during prep to give that reason, uh, that muscle a reason to stick around. Uh, primarily it's mechanical tension is what the muscles registering so maintaining strength is of the utmost important while on a dieting phase now the issue is recovery gets compromised and strength can start dropping it can drop just from body weight and leverage changes it can drop just simply by not recovering as much or there could be an increase in training volume which that's not only count weight training, but also cardio as well. And that volume prevents you from recovering. Um, that could be coupled with 
uh, nutritional changes and also supplementation changes or even sleep alterations. All these things go into your recovery. So I would say before altering your weight training, make sure everything else is in place. Look at sleep, look at uh, proper rest period, supplementation. If that is all in place for your strength weight training as you're dieting, uh, I wouldn't change much at first, The but at, you know if it does tend to drop, the thing that's really you want to maintain is the intensity. So the loads you're using for the same amount of reps. Uh, the volume can be reduced. There was a study by Bickle in 2011. They had 70 subjects. They, they put them on a 16 week weight training routine. It was three days a week. They would do nine sets on each day. So 27 sets total for the week. They took those same groups and they split them into, they had one group stop weight training, they had one group do one third the volume but maintain intensity. So they would do one weight training session a week, nine sets. The other group they did a ninth of it, okay? So they trained once a week then and only did three work sets. Um, all groups, of course the group that stopped training they did lose muscle mass and strength. Um, the group that did the one ninth the training volume did have some decreases in strength and minimal muscle mass loss, but the group that did the one third training volume still had some increases in strength and, and minimal muscle loss. Now this isn't, it, you have to put this in context, that it's not on a calorie deficit and everything, but the, the point being is that maintaining training intensity and decreasing volume can very well maintain muscle mass. So I would try to maintain your program of what you're doing, but as you fatigue starts setting in, you notice workouts are starting to get more challenging, that might be a time to look into decreasing volume and ways to do that to up increase intensity would first be looking at what, what methods are you using to conduct your sets. If you're doing lots of forced reps, uh, extended sets with um, drop sets or rest pause or using supersets, those would be the first things to look at as switching more to doing just straight sets. So you can still have the same amount of total work sets, but just don't go so far past failure. Hit your failure, you, you gave that stimulus, move on to the next set from there. Um, the next point might be decreasing volume a little bit more by pulling maybe just a couple sets out or an exercise out. Now, I say this cautionally because at the same point, if you're bodybuilding, the main point is we do need to be in a deficit and that weight lifting is, that, that bout is causing quite a big a bit of an energy deficit. Um, we're not trying to achieve our main deficit through weight training, it is to maintain muscle mass. But at the same time, if we keep dropping training volume back, you're gonna continue to decrease the amount of calories burned and you're gonna have to make that up somewhere else. So you have to balance it somewhat. So I wouldn't go so far in reducing your training volume to where you're having to make it up with extra cardio because that's, that is not what you wanna be doing. I would try to make up a lot of the deficit through diet. You're gonna be doing cardio, but only reducing training volume as, as much as needed to try to maintain strength. At some point, strength will drop. It's gonna happen and we can't reduce training volume anymore. Um, so you just have to realize that once you get so lean, strength is going, going to be dropping. Um, but, but that's how I would be um, trying to modify my training volume intensity throughout prep as I'm, as I'm dining. So we're gonna implement the changes Matt has right out this next week. Um, make sure you like the video, subscribe. Next, these videos are gonna come out every Monday, so we'll see what changes we have when I'm 14 weeks out. See you guys next time.